In the month of October 2024, I spent $7,123.97. We're gonna jump into that number and see exactly what they mean in this financial update. And I'm also gonna let you in on what my financial plan is for the year of 2025. And this video serves as a reminder to you that you don't have to wait till the new year to start your new year's resolutions. You can literally get started right now. As a matter of fact, if you do get started right now, you'll be two months ahead of everybody else. So breaking this $7,123 number down, this is what we're working with. I spent $1,800.75 on rent, $1,692 on giving. For groceries, I spent $802.93. For restaurants, I spent $609.28. This is largely due to the fact that I've cut back significantly on spending money on DoorDash, but that tends to manifest in other areas and it happens to still be food just in a different place. So on that end, I need to work some things out. Stuff like this doesn't kill me financially, but I do think in the back of my head like, man, I need to be investing this money and we'll talk about that a little more later. Anyway, the gym slash Muay Thai. I'm talking about the recreational gym mixed in with my Muay Thai classes, mixed in with my Muay Thai private sessions. That came out to $432.97, which is within budget. I usually budget for $500 a month on that end. DoorDash. I'm still not perfect with it, but I did come out to $358.89 because I've been about controlling myself and having that discipline. I've been cooking at home. You know what I'm saying. It's time to get it down to below 200. Insurance ended up coming out to $341.15. And taking a closer look at this, this is purely talking about my renter's insurance, my car insurance, and my term and whole life life insurance. So right here where it says telephone, we need to change that to a, a word from this century because we don't be saying that word anymore. We say cell phone. But anyway, this $281.94 wasn't completely within just my phone plan. This is also looping in my internet bill. So with AT&T, I pay $105.95. And with Verizon, which is my phone carrier, I spend $175.99. And fun fact, on this phone that you see right here, I have my work phone and my personal phone both merged in on the same SIM card. So my company actually pays for some of my phone plans. So if y'all look at that and feel like it's too expensive, I'm not really spending that much on my own individual phone plan. Student loans ended up being $211.06. Gasoline and fuel, I did a little better this month. Last month it was in the 200s. This month it's $192.37. Business slash miscellaneous business things. We're talking about Audible, we're talking about Adobe, TubeBuddy, which is the SEO optimization app that I try to use for YouTube, but I haven't been using it as much, so I'm actually considering getting rid of that, but that's also including things like Zoom, which is where I do my meetings on and, and where I have my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, as well as my email marketing software and a bunch of other different things that you probably don't care to know about at this moment in time, so we're gonna keep on going. General merchandise is always going to fall into things that are extra, such as everything that I order from Amazon. So actually stuff like Amazon Prime, as well as just anything that I order from Amazon, which is typically going to be supplements or something like that. Vitamin D, magnesium, blah, blah, blah. Nothing too crazy on my end. I don't really spend that much on Amazon. So I am glad that that's not one of my vices, because if it was, it just might be worse than what I've been spending these past few months on DoorDash. We don't need to talk about that right now. Anyway, other expenses, me and my girlfriend and one of her friends, we all went out to round one to have some arcade fun. That was about fun. I didn't realize arcades can be about fun for a prolonged amount of time. We were there for some hours now. But you know, for some less exciting news, utilities were actually pretty cheap this month, $47.02, which is exciting for me that the expense is low, it's just that utilities is a boring expense compared to like an arcade. You see what I'm saying? Entertainment, again, I don't spend too much money on this every month because I spend most of my week putting in that good work, working out, doing what I'm supposed to do, making these videos. So the form of entertainment that costed me $23.48 for the month of October happened to be Netflix. 
y'all can ignore this healthcare slash medical because it says ten dollars but it's really vid iq which should have been in my business slash miscellaneous expenses one thing about this app that i'm using that i recommend that y'all use too it does have its mistakes here and there so that's just something to be mindful of but vid iq is nothing but another seo optimization app to help me reach a further audience on my youtube channel and so the rest of this stuff were just tiny expenses. One of them is Peacock, which should have technically been an entertainment. And this $5 for automotive, I went to the DMV to get that little sticker that, that you put on your license plate. And the rest of this are just tiny expenses. So stuff like Patreon, Apple's monthly bill for the data that I'm paying for. And that's about it, which all led to a grand total of $7,123.97. As you've probably seen throughout this progression, throughout my Wealth Journey episodes and these videos right here where I'm specifically talking about my financial updates, to be perfectly honest with you, these are my least favorite videos to make because it puts me in a very vulnerable place to be like, hey, this is what I spend my money on. But anyway, as you can probably see, there's been a progression, like a downwards progression in terms of me spending less and less on a monthly basis. Some of that was just changing my habits around and some of that was just getting more dialed into what my goal is. But you know, the thing about me is I'm always gonna be harder on myself than anybody else is ever gonna be hard on me when it comes to what I'm supposed to be doing. So I have a treat for you guys. I'm gonna talk about my financial plan for the year of 2025 and I have it all written down. And the way that I've started to build this was my smart money calculator. I built the smart money calculator specifically for myself to better manage my money from like a year at a glance perspective. So I know at the top of the year, I know at the very worst case scenario, I'm only able to spend X amount of money per month. And then I know that if I make more money than what I'm permitted to spend, that automatically needs to go somewhere else, whether it's saving or whether it's investing. And y'all know I love investing. So that's the side that I'm leaning more towards. So the first few things I'm hyper-focused on for the year of 2025 is this. Keeping debt at absolutely zero when it comes to credit cards. So y'all have seen on my financial updates with my net worth and things like that, you've seen to where I've had $300, $1,000, $200 left on my credit card that I would then pay off at the beginning of every month. I'm thinking to myself, I really don't have to do that. I don't have to spend too much money at all on my credit card. I could do $20, $5, I could do $0 some months on my credit card. I don't need to use it as what I'm getting at, so I don't need to put myself in a position to have to pay something off when I never should have had to anyway. For me, I just like the, the ease and peace of mind just knowing that I don't have to spend money on a credit card. And that's one thing that I constantly check to make sure I'm not lax on because if, if I don't check it, I'm straight up gonna forget that I need to pay it off and then it'll accumulate an ungodly amount of interest and I don't like the idea of me having to pay off an ungodly amount of interest. But the second thing is to keep a $1,500 buffer in my cash account and again i'm starting this right now as we speak as i'm talking to you right now on this video that is something that i'm aiming towards actually achieving before 2025 so that way everything's dialed in the buffer is built i've tried an 800 dollars buffer a 600 dollars buffer a 1000 dollars buffer i think the 1500 dollars buffer for my checking account and this is what i'm talking about my checking account i think that will fit perfectly because it will completely stop me from reaching into a savings or into an emergency fund or anything like that to be able to afford being able to invest in anything in particular or if something pops up and I wasn't prepared for gifts or I wasn't prepared for a certain holiday I'm not having to reach outside of my comfort zone because I promised myself I wouldn't touch certain accounts and I have broken said promise and I am going to prevent myself from doing that in the future and that's how I plan on doing it. So that's why I came up with the smart money calculator and I'll show it on the screen real quick for you. That's why I came up with this because of the simple fact that I know I have problems remembering certain things, certain birthdays, certain things pop up. They always catch me by surprise. But what if they didn't? then I'd be able to plan for it. Then I wouldn't be overspending on certain things. Then I wouldn't be saying, oh, you know, I don't feel like cooking today. Let me door dash this over here. If I had planned ahead, I'd be like, no, I am gonna cook. 
I'm not going to a DoorDash because then it'll allow me this amount of opportunity to spend on other things that are frankly more fulfilling than DoorDash. DoorDash is here for a second and then it's gone, disposed in the trash can somewhere because I didn't ate all the food. But giving somebody gifts, being able to give to people in general, being able to invest, being able to save, all that stuff is more fulfilling because it buys me more opportunities and more fulfillment in life. And that is what I appreciate. And that's just me being a much better steward of my money. So I'm starting to look at myself as a business because as a very, very, very small business owner at this time, um, I need to start looking at the same way I analyze stocks. I need to be analyzing myself to make sure I'm doing what is right with my money so I can make it grow and I can make the most in the future. And if I can't handle the certain amount of money that I'm making right now, how am I going to handle double that, triple that, quadruple that, 10 times that? You get what I'm saying? So that's the stuff that I'm thinking about right now. So I'm going to use my own smart money calculator and you'll see it in future videos where I actually have it populated and I figured all the numbers out. At, on this day of me recording this video, I haven't sat down and really done the math and really calculated everything out to exactly what I want, but I know the specific direction I want and that's all I need to be able to then sit down and calculate the number. But I will share a little bit of my investing strategy so you know my Webull account, my absolute favorite account. It's something that I put $14,000 of my own money in and boom, it spit $20,000 back at me. That is amazing. That more than doubled my principal. So I'm going to keep doing that. But also notice I'm getting a certain amount of dividends. I made $119 for the whole year because uh, the dividends that I'm getting from Microsoft, from Apple, from NVIDIA, from VTI. But I looked at which ones had the biggest dividends out of all of that. VTI and Microsoft have the biggest dividends. So I'm aiming heavily on investing in those two a lot more. So what if I'm, what if instead of $119 per year with everything combined, what if Microsoft by itself or VTI by itself made me $100 per year? And then I just continue to add on to that every single year. Eventually, it's going to be $100, $200, $1,000 per year. And it makes the, the growth that I'm already getting even more aggressive because I have my account set to automatically go ahead and put the dividend back into the stock. But if I ever do something like make $5,000 per year on just dividends, I could theoretically turn the auto investment off and then start pocketing that $5,000. You see what I'm saying? And that right there, that's how you let your money work for you. You let your money grow. You let your money multiply. And that's what I'm looking into doing. So I'm looking at not just what grows the most aggressively, but also aggressive growth plus dividends. Stocks are one of my favorite things to talk about. I could literally talk about it all day, every single day. So as y'all see, my main focus for the year of 2025 is to one, make sure that my cash is more responsible, we'll say, because when I look at my net worth, the smallest portion of that is cash. Is my cash in a good spot? It's in a decent spot. It's, it's in the five figures, but do I want it to grow further beyond that? Absolutely, I do. And I need to make sure I am more intentional with my money in that way. And in doing that, I'll be able to invest more. I'll be able to do whatever the heck I want even more. I'm already pretty much doing whatever I want, but I want to expand that a little further beyond what it is right now so I can open more, more doors, I almost said windows, I can open more doors for myself in the future and those I care about. If you want to learn more about the smart money calculator and how it should be used so you can apply this to your own life, I want you to check this video out right here.